On today's video, I'm going to install this bucket seat into my 350Z. So I've been needing a bucket seat for a long time just to hold me in the car better because of how much grip the car has now. Uh, recently, my seat started moving around a lot and one of the uprights got a little place, so installing this bucket seat a little faster than I planned so I didn't get to save up accordingly. So before you guys crucify me in the comments, this is an NRG fixed back FRP bucket seat using their sliders with a planted seat bracket for the 350Z. The nice thing with the planted seat bracket is it's drilled from multiple different styles of bucket seat, so in the future I can still upgrade to something nicer. I went with the NRG because I've sat in them before and they're actually pretty comfortable and fit me well, and uh, I figure a steel frame fixed back bucket seat is better than a reclining OEM seat and even better than a broken reclining OEM seat. So really, this is the better decision than leaving what I have. All right, the first thing we're gonna have to do actually, cause we're gonna have to disconnect the battery in a sec, we're gonna actually have to move the seat in the most forward position and the most upward position. That way we can get these back bolts over here. So there's just little caps here and I believe they're 14 millimeter screws. So we're gonna take these out first then we're gonna recline it back again and we're gonna get the front bolts. I am going to take great joy in vacuuming out this after the seat's out. Oh my god, I can't believe how messy it is. I'm going to keep all the bolts with the Planted Technologies uh, seat bracket and we'll reuse those bolts when we install it. Alright, now we're going to disconnect the battery because some models of 350Z have side airbags in the seats, so we don't want to risk any chance of deployment. Alright, it took a little minute to get all the connectors out. But our heavy seat is out. Next thing we need to do, we need to pull the seat belt off of the seat. I'm going to be reusing the factory seat belts. Um, you don't want to ever use harnesses unless you have a Hans device as well. I don't have any of that and I'll be street driving the car so obviously I'm not going to drive around with a helmet on the street. So the factory three point is going to be the safest bet. Safety is one of those things where if you do a harness, you have to do a Hans device, and usually that means you have to wear your helmet all the time, and which usually means you have a caged vehicle as well with a harness bar. It's just one of those things. So anyone else doing this, harnesses might look cool. They might get you five more scene points at a car meet, but if you get in an accident and you don't have a Hans device, it can snap your neck. So to get the rest of the seatbelt out, there's the wire here for the seatbelt uh, indicator. So we got to take this plastic off and fish the wire out, and we're going to reuse that so we don't have any lights on. Another thing we're going to have to do, we're going to have to take off this bottom seatbelt bolt. The reason we do that is because we're going to have to loop it through the side bucket of uh, the seat. Because if not, if it sits over the bucket, we won't have any uh, lap restraint. So in a crash or a rollover, we'll be injected out of our seat. This is the way which we can still keep this functioning properly. Two hours later. Well, I decided to shampoo the carpet as best I could and clean all the plastics. Got a little carried away, but probably the best time to do is right now. Guys, I can't deal, but I've had someone that's wanted to ride along with me. Do you want to go? You want to go for a drive? <laughs> a drive? <laughs> What's this? There's no seat in here. What happened, Presley? You're the mechanic, doggo. Tell me what happened. He says it's above his pay grade. All right, next thing we're gonna do is this yellow connector here is for the airbag on the side of the seat. Some models, it was a factory order option that had the side airbags and they kind of looked for that, not thinking that I would ever put bucket seats in the car because I thought the factory seats were suitable, but they, after going to 275s and some uh, sticky federal RSRRs coupon code in the link below, um, I can't hold myself in the stock seat. So, but I don't want my car looking janky and having a bunch of lights flashing, so we're going to figure out what we need to put in this connector here to trick the computer into thinking that the airbag is functioning properly. Now, being a student of the dark art of electrical engineering, I have plenty of resistors laying around. So all I did was I took a 2.2 ohm resistor and plugged it into both pins. From the back end, I confirmed that we still had 2.2 ohms of resistance from these two wires here including whatever internal resistance to the multimeter, etc. And it does come out. Um, that was the multimeter about to shut off because it's been sitting. So now all I'm literally going to do, because I didn't want to cut any wires or do any soldering because I just have the stigma in my head. I hate doing something where I can't revert the car back to perfect OEM. Um, 
Now I'm just going to electrical tape this. So if I ever wanted to put a factory seat with the airbag back in the car again for whatever reason, like if I wanted a salad or whatever it is, um, it would be very easy. So I'm just going to put electrical tape over this to ensure that it doesn't fall out. All right, so here's the seat bracket with the universal sliders they got. I'm going to assemble it. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it. I'm going to see how high I sit with the sliders on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to loosely assemble it so I can still play around with all the angles and, you know, where everything sits exactly. And when I find a good spot, I'll fix it all together. All right, so I loosely assembled four of the bolts in. And what I started to do, push these inwards so they're in close as possible so that way we know it'll make it onto the bracket. All right, now that we have it all tightened and fixed in place, we now need to bolt it to the seat. Now to do that, we have to access these holes. So we're going to have to seat, slide them back one way, slide them back the other way. That way we have full access to these holes and we can bolt it up to the bucket seat. We got it all bolted up now. Um, one thing you want to keep in mind when you're bolting all of these up is to keep making sure it's straight because they're not holes, they're slots. So you can shift them side to side, left and right. And you want to make sure you have it lined up properly. Alright, so here's the fun part. I'm going to try to put this in there. Um, now it's not, I can't recline this seat, so I'm going to have to finagle it in. Um, I'm going to lightly bolt it in and make sure I like where the seating position is and all that stuff. Make sure it's all good before I finalize the seat belt and everything else. Alright, I've got the seat in with the sliders, but there is one issue. There's like an inch between the roof and my head. So uh, what I'm going to have to do is going to have to fix it, unfortunately. Um, because I won't be able to fit in here with a helmet. Alright, so now what we're going to do, I'm in the seat now. Um, with no bolting whatsoever. Just going to slide it. You kind of see, it's hard to see gonna slide it to where I can put my clutch in all the way clutch in all the way with my knee still a little bent same thing with gas pedal knee has to be still a little bent and where I have comfortable uh, position leg wise gonna mark it and then we're gonna bolt it up to where I marked it all right so I managed to get two little bolts in there lined up with the pre-made planted holes Unfortunately, the other two that line up, line up enough that I can't fit a bowl through there. A bolt, not a bowl. A bowl would be very big. Uh, but I can't fit a bolt through there. So what I'm going to do is bust out the Dremel, shave off a little bit, and uh, bolt it down. Remember kids, if your headlights don't match your safety glasses, then you're a nerd. I just thought of that, and most safety glasses are clear, and most headlights are clear. So, you win this time. Six and a half hours later. Alright, that last hole has been dremeled. Um, whatever steel, I, I cut the NRG part of the bracket, not the planted. And whatever NRG uses is super, super hard steel. Kudos to them. It's not some cheap, like, hybrid Chinesium. So, oddly enough, with this, um, I needed to go buy a bolt. Or I needed to go buy a nut for this bolt that was in the factory seat that held the seat belt on. This thread pitch is 7 16 by 20, which is really odd being a Japanese vehicle to have a standard size bolt. Um, that might be because, for whatever reason, maybe the U.S. Department of Transportation had their hands in this because they have a lot of control over what happens and a lot of say that it ended up in a and an American facility or whatever, American engineer, maybe an engineer for the DOT if they have them, and they went with the 7 16 Anyway, anyone doing this, this is a 7 16 by 20. Okay, so so initially I wanted to put the seat belt on the inside so it's as close as possible. The issue is it's gonna be really hard to get the buckle in, seeing how it lines up right there. Um, so we're gonna put on the outside. And instead, we're going to reverse this. We're, this. So this bolt here, is, it's not just a regular 7 16 by 20. It has a little fitting here, so that way it fits in there solid. So we're going to put it in backwards like that, and slide this over, and bolt it down like that. So my initial concern was being too far out might create slop in the belt, but seeing how tight it's going to be anyway, I'm not worried about it. So we're going to do it like this. All the... 
Next thing we gotta do with all these wires here, I plug the seat belt back in. Now I need to zip tie these all up or else they're gonna move around. It's gonna drive me absolutely insane. So being a Nissan, I already had like 20 of these in the car. All right, last step. Last step, bolting it in. Oh my God, this is so tight. Torque to spec, torquing. Torque to spec. Alrighty, fellas, this is what I was talking about, the seatbelt. So we have it here, and then we have it going through here, see? We have it going through here, so that way, when I go put the belt on, I pull it out that way and over my lap. So this is now over here. All we gotta do is bolt it in, and that's it. There it is, it looks so sweet in the car. It feels good. I'm excited to see how it does it autocross this Sunday. Uh, only one minor issue, and that is the bolster just sticks a little bit. So I might be able to figure that out because I got a little bit of a gap on this side. But for now, it'll get the job done. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, we'll see you guys at Autocross in the next video. Thanks for watching.